Hey, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about how long should your sessions be when you work with a horse. Now this is not exclusively for gated horses, it's just for horses in general. How long should your session be? How many things can you work on? Is it better just to work on one thing until you get it? Can you break it up? What's the deal? Well, <laughs> I'm actually not here to give you a number. Uh, this session is probably going to be like a little more disjointed because I don't have it fully worked out. This question came about because it's something my husband asked me um, while we were in the car. He's like, so if you're, should you work on one thing until you have it down or can you work on different things? And I was like, that's a great question. I don't think I've ever addressed that in a video. Here's my short answer is Sessions should be kept short. Now that can depend on what you're working on, how well the horse knows it, and the age or, or mental age of the horse. So what I mean by that is when I'm working with a gated horse, usually they're horses that are over five years old. They've been ridden multiple times before they came to me and I'm mostly working on trying to get them to you know, just to gate. So it, they're not green, they're not young. And my sessions tend to be 10 to 30 minutes long. Occasionally I go to 40, uh, but not usually longer than that. Usually when I get gated horses for training, which is what I'm gonna talk about here, but I'm gonna expand it in just a minute. Usually I'm working on head down. And head down is so important for me to get the horses to understand that I do focus just on that. But my sessions are short, so I may work on it for just 10 minutes. But along with that, as you know if you watch my videos, there's a lot of stopping and standing. So the horse physically isn't working very long or very hard when I'm working on head down. And same when I start actually working on building the gate, I work a lot on walking, stopping and standing, and along with that, refreshing head down and, and working on the gate. But those sessions end up being 10 to 30 minutes long on average. So pretty short. Now, let's say, oh, there's so many things to talk about. Okay, let's just say you're working with a young horse. They may only need five to 10 minutes and you do a little bit with them and you put them away because they don't have the attention span of an older horse. Okay, that's very important to recognize. Now, you can have an older horse that's been unhandled and that horse, because he's not mentally that mature, because he hasn't ever been handled by people, might have a short attention span of a two-year-old or a one-year-old. So be aware that the age of the horse does not necessarily determine its attention span. Likewise, if you've been training your horse through weanling, yearling, two-year-old, three-year-old, they may have a longer attention span than if you pull a three-year-old out of the pasture. They're not gonna have the same attention span. Uh, one thing I do like is if you're working on multiple things, side passing, stepping up, tarps, uh, backing up, lots of things, it's okay to work on multiple things in one session, especially if you keep each thing short. So I'm not suggesting you spend 20 minutes on three things, but you could work on side passing for five minutes, and then you could work up on backing up for five minutes, and then you work on stopping for five minutes, and then you could go back to side passing. Uh, but as long as you're breaking it up. Uh, it also doesn't matter if you don't work with the horse five days a week or seven days a week or four days a week. This is true if you just work with them once a week or several times a month, whatever you have time for. As a horse trainer, and my own horses get neglected, they often get work sporadically. <laughs> and it's still true that I don't try to, so if I haven't worked with my horse in six months, I don't take them out and work with them for an hour and a half just to get all my training in. That's cramming, and I don't approve. If you're doing things like clicker training and groundwork, uh, those are done best done in short bursts, less than five minutes when teaching a new behavior. So if it's something that the horse already knows and you're refining it and he gets it, that's different. But if you are starting to teach him the target or you're teaching head down or back up or uh, liberty walking and you've never done it before, five minutes is good. Now, here's the cool thing. Let's say your horse is on your property. You do five minutes, you go inside, 
and you do something and come right back out and do another short five minute session. That's what's so cool. But if you're working on something, like I work on head down and it may be one of the only things I work on, although I'm always working on stopping and standing because I do so much stop and praise. One of the things that I continue working on is, or one thing that I try to focus on is keeping the session short. If the horse makes progress and it's only been five minutes, I put that horse away. Sorry. I did not mute my phone. Um, so, so it's important to do shorter sessions, but you can do multiple things in one session. Like my quarter horse knows, he knows dressage, he knows liberty, he knows a gazillion tricks. We can do all of those things and practice them in 30 to 40 minutes and he's not going to get bored because we've gone from one thing to the next. Uh, Pamela says, I've asked myself this often, knowing I wanted to work on several different things, but conflicted on whether to combine gait training and faster stuff as well, all in the same ride. I usually pick one or the other at this point, but interested to hear your take on it. Well, Pamela, I would be interested in knowing like what things you're talking about combining. So when I'm working with a gated horse, I work, so when I was in Illinois and I would have a horse for training and let's say I was working on the gate, we would work on walking and walking back toward home. We would work on stopping and standing. We would work on head down if the horse was pacey and then we would work on holding a consistent gait. And often I would work at holding different speeds in gait. So some faster and then walking and then a nice even gait on a loose rein and then more walking. So it kind of depends on, on what you're trying to work on. Uh, as long, and again, remember that I'm either letting the horse walk or stop and praise when they get it right. And my rides are short. My rides are 20 to 30 minutes. That's it. I'm done. The horse has learned. Whitney Gordon said, I've been wondering myself. I work with my mare five or 10 minutes on small things like tricks, touch, kisses. That's perfect. And that's actually what they recommend. Anytime I take videos of myself doing like clicker training, and if it goes over five minutes, most people say they notice a shift in the horse. Uh, less than five minutes is usually ideal when working on something new. It doesn't mean you can never do seven minutes, but I myself have noticed that a lot of times seven minutes when teaching something new is pushing the, what they can handle, uh, even with stop and praise and clicker training. Whitney says, continues on, but trying to figure out how many things we can work on in one session when doing groundwork. If there's a way we can start working on head down in hand instead of the saddle. My mare needs top line built back up before we saddle up again. Well, Whitney, so you, I can, you can work on a lot of different things in one session, especially if you keep them all short. If you check out my winter exercises video, I talk about how to do head down uh, and back up from the ground, which is really good. There's a, a, a couple different top line groundwork exercises in that winter video. So you can check that out as well. So it, it, it matters how much your horse knows. So if your horse is fresh off of winter and can't gate well because they're out of shape, don't expect them to gate for an hour. Go for 15 minutes and if they do well and they're relaxed, just head home. No big deal. We don't want to make the gate hard for the horse because that would be the opposite of what we want. We want them to enjoy the gate and to appreciate it. And I am looking at it from a very specific like training head down. Now, I want to go back because if I get a horse for training and they're high headed, I will focus everything, all my training is on head down and standing still. Uh, I'm not working on the gate. I may just be working at the walk and asking for softness because of course softness is part of head down, but I won't work on too many other things. Now you could also work on the leg yield, but the leg yield is ineffective until the horse gets the head down. So I would rather see multiple short sessions of head down rather than work on anything. Now, if you need to work with tarps or obstacles or go on a ride, like that's totally fine to mix it up and include those, but I won't include, I mean, I won't be working on many things until the horse learns softness and head down. And again, this makes them safer on the road and whenever I ride them, not to mention calmer. Pamela says, my rides are usually 30 minutes or less. Awesome. I need to work on getting gait with head down, but also he needs to work on stepping off in the lope. 
I know these things are totally different, so not sure if doing both during the same ride is a good idea. Great question. Um, actually, yes, you can do both, but here's my suggestion. I usually work on the canter at the end of a training session. So at the end of a clinic session or at the end of a, a you know, if I'm riding at home, that's the last thing I work on is working on my canter transitions. If I'm working on that using the poles or a jump and if the horse does well, I stop and I can just get off. I also don't want the horse to get all hyped up. So let's say it's a really windy day. I may not work on canter that day because the horse may be more likely to run off or buck or just act out. And so I might choose to skip it for that day. Uh, or if the horse seems like they're paying attention, I may decide to do it. But I would usually do that the faster work at the end of the ride after I've worked on relaxation. And then it's totally fine to work on it in the same ride. Again, I, I would work on the gate and then either when you're close to home or after you get back, you know, in your arena, in your pasture, then specifically work on the canter. And when he does well, get off, put him away. Um, but I'm, I'm in favor of working those, but not just like alternating. Now, you know, don't just do gate, canter, gate, canter. Another phone call. Busy day today. Uh... Pamela also says, perfect, that's what I thought. Faster stuff at the end because he does get hyper. And this way, you don't have to, if he gives you one good transition, you can just stop. You don't even have to wait for him to get hyper or get worked up. You can just stop and get off and say that was great. And practice um, with the canter specifically. I do lots of standing. I ask for the canter. If they give it to me, I, I either just walk for five minutes or more likely, I stop and praise and let the horse just rest and stand there and think and chew because we want to train. Cantering is great, but cantering and then stopping, that's where it's at. And I'll often use treats to back up that standing is really good. And this actually takes a lot of the hyperness out of horses because they canter and then we stand there and they're like, well, that wasn't very exciting. So that's what I tend to do. Uh, so again, short rides, short sessions when you're learning new. Uh, but if you're doing clicker training, keep your sessions short. I've had to really work on that myself because it was so easy just to go over there and just like, oh, this is great. We're doing so well. We're making progress and just keep going rather than walk away when they're doing well and just come back. Uh, easier for sure if your horse is on your own property. I didn't realize how spoiled I was with that until I moved. So anyway, um... I think that's, unless anybody has another question, that's really what I wanted to focus on is keep your session short. If your horse does well, put them away. Keep in mind their attention span, which could be based on age or simply their experience. And try not to make your horse too tired. Watch for signs of frustration. Don't feel like you have to win. And if your horse is getting frustrated or you're getting frustrated, just stop. It's okay to put your horse away. It's not a battle or a contest of wills that you have to win. Lots of people disagree, but that's not how, how horses think. I want my horse to end as calm as when we started or calmer. And that's actually something John Lyon says, and I, I love that. Um, let's see. Ed says, I like to mix in relationship stuff every, as walking horses. Every time I work with my horse, this helps them realize that you get them and they're your part and you're their partner. That's a great idea to work with relationship stuff. Maybe it's you take the saddle off and you let your horse eat some grass and you just hang out with them, or you do some liberty work, or there's a lot of different things you can do to build a relationship. I love that idea. Uh, Sue says, wow, I've always done any cantering at the end just by accident. Well, good job. Again, that's not like you can never canter at the beginning, especially if your horse is trained. Like my horse, Jackson, he's trained. I can canter him at the beginning and it doesn't matter. It's not gonna affect his energy level over much. Uh, but it's a trained thing. When I'm doing training on a specific thing, uh, if it adds energy, I tend to do it near the end. Uh, okay. Um, anyway, just for fun, because I just completed this painting. Well, it's, it's almost done. Uh, I just finished this painting. You can see. There you go. Uh, it's watercolor. Um, it was very fun to do. Uh, just wanted to let people see something if they like that. I was very happy how that one came out. The colors don't show up really well here. It's, it's a bit more blue and dark than it looks in the video. Anyway, I'm going to finish this live video and probably go do more painting.
Uh, hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to do live videos next week, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to talk about. So I'll take any suggestions. Uh, one suggestion was to talk about how farriers, how to have, how to handle your horse while farriers are trimming your horse and what you can do to help prepare them. So that's one possibility. I don't have any footage of that yet. So I might need to go practice that or get some footage of it. We'll see. Um, but I'll take any suggestions for video ideas. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps you and I hope you have a great weekend.